Hi Libra. Sorry, my voice is in and out. So bear with me if I sound a little weird and my voice cracks. Welcome to March 2024. Things move really, really fast. And you have the ability to create a lot of change. When we get the magician with this kind of speed, it usually means that something, a pattern that you've had for a long time, now can suddenly and quite easily be changed because either your confidence is boosted or you reach a point of frustration where the way that you have been categorizing certain behaviors, emotions, patterns, that categorization is questioned either by you or by circumstance and the way that you compartmentalize things is tested and questioned. <coughs> so for some of you, this is about complacency towards a situation or a way that you are made to feel, especially romantically, that you have tolerated and you have made excuses for You've justified. But now with Pluto moving, things change very rapidly for you. There have been months of stasis where you have just been vacillating from scale to scale, almost as if you were trying to find the beat in it. Now it's as if in March the missing piece comes to you, and that missing piece is inspiration, it's creative inspiration, it's energy, and you're able to take that energy and direct it very easily towards the aspects of your life where your thinking has you hedged in. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Let's continue. Now it's not just that you feel hedged in, it's also a source of disappointment for you because you would like to, during these north-south node, north node-south node times, you would like to think that you are someone who can break with, let's say, the norms of society if you need to for your own good. And if you haven't ever been that way, perhaps this is very new to you and that in and of itself is shaking you. But it's internal, right? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. There is this raw creative impulse that's pushing you to no longer accept disappointment to no longer feed regret. I'm going to get something to drink. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, one of the things that the, the theme, right? One of the themes of this inspiration is being tired of disappointment. Your ability to live with disappointment, especially in terms of love, that ability has become, that, that whatever justification you were using to keep yourself there, it's become obsolete. The excuses don't work. The justifications don't work. Whatever has talked you into relationships in the past or has kept you in situations where you were constantly disappointed, the mental acrobatics you have to do to keep making that happen are just not there. And regardless of how 
much society tries to constrain you right now. <coughs> <coughs> You just don't have it in you to listen anymore. You're tired. You're tired of being let down by your own reasoning. You're tired of playing the good guy and ending up last because of it. You're tired of the self-imposed nice guy routine. And for some of you, this is really surprising because you may have not been the most honest with a partner, but it was like not fairly harmless, but it wasn't serious. And now you find out that actually that person is much more flawed than you on an emotional level. Some of you may even realize at this time that there isn't much of an emotional connection with someone that you were heading towards putting all your eggs in one basket with. Which leads to its own kind of disappointment, which you can you know, refer back to points in your life or points within the said relationship where you have had to do this before. But like I said, those mechanisms are broken they don't work anymore. Those thought processes, Pluto's like, no, you can't use that one. No, you can't use that one either. No, we're getting rid of that one too. So if there isn't some real logic, some real justifiable reason, the bad behavior, the making excuses, the living with disappointment, it has to come to an end now. It's tiring. <laughs> it's going to require a lot of rest. But surprisingly, you can meet somebody at this time because you're in such a vulnerable state. You're admitting to yourself that the way that you've been disciplining yourself and, you know, making things work it hasn't worked it's a vulnerable time but you're also that vulnerability does put you in a powerfully receptive energy so you can attract somebody really great someone who could actually long term bring you a lot of peace and security but it's only if you are willing to go forward with this truth telling that you're doing with yourself. If you, upon meeting somebody new, revert back to old habits that you had in old situations, could be, you know, suspicion and lack of credibility with a partner. It could be, um, there are many bad habits, right? You could be possessive, it could be manipulative, it could be about power struggles. Whatever you've been through in the past that made you employ those methods, you're not all the way healed from that. But try not to bring it into this new thing. Because you will turn the new thing into the old thing if you can't leave those habits behind. <clears throat> So the most honesty here that's needed is between you and yourself. You need to understand how detrimental your making of excuses has been for you. And then it will sting a lot less. And hopefully, inshallah, you'll be able to enjoy yourself <clears throat> excuse me, in a new situation that's worthy of you and can actually make you happy. That new person is here for a new contemplative you who is very much into being honest with themselves. That's who that new person is for. That new person is for the new you, not for the old you. 
Remember that when you start to like them a little too much and you start to revert back to your bad habits because they will only take you back to one place. Somewhere you've been and you never want to go back to, right? Now, this transformation that you're going through, it does also affect the way you communicate and build relationships with others. So there's a lot of learning on your feet, a lot of new opportunities, inshallah, that you can take advantage of because your way of communicating is changing altogether. I think it's a lot more authentic, it's more unapologetic, it's exciting, and it comes from being tapped into a really creative place and feeling very inspired. And to go along with that, I would say that if you have a creative project or a hobby that you really love and that takes you out of like space and time and puts you in that beautiful flow state, Try to imagine a financial future with that now. Be vulnerable enough and brave enough to share your creativity and your art with people, even if you don't deem yourself a creative. Um, that doesn't mean you're not. <laughs> Embrace the fact that changing in so many ways also allows you the gift to change you know, other personal aspects that have nothing to do with relationships. It's just between you and yourself, your relationship with your creativity, with your inspiration, with your courage. And if you're able to summon the courage to share your creativity with someone, share your ideas with someone, I think it's very possible for them to offer you some kind of money, some kind of deal, something that will boost your interest in being bold something that will entice you to continue to be creative and give you a lot of um, a lot of fuel to trust yourself and to put more of yourself out there it's really exciting in that way so you can also build new connections to people who have already been in your life you can build a whole new set of connections and a whole new relationship with people that you already know. But this also includes toxic people that are going to try to come back and see if they can build a new relationship with you. I would suggest against it. That's all I'll say about that. I would suggest you not do that. You may be tempted because you just want to like test your new relationship building skills, but I think that's a mess that you shouldn't really get involved in. And simply, you know, for no other reason, just that I think it's like a more stuck version of you. Um, and it's boring. <clears throat> it's traditional, it's stuck, it's boring. And you can pretend that those are still things you want, but... I think your mentality has moved on. <coughs> of course, you can still want stability and love and togetherness and, you know, f happiness in the family, in love, in friendship. You can still want all those things without adhering to the traditional models that made you come up with the excuses in the first place to deny your own feelings and your own needs. So there's no point in jumping back into all that now that you've found, you know, this kind of rogue door to run out of. It doesn't mean that you don't get to have your happy times and your, you know, that, that the conservative part of you is not fed. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that this gets a makeover it doesn't look the way that it used to. Not that that old life won't try to call you back all the time, because it absolutely will. And that's why those two cards being at the beginning are so important, because it is quite a signifier of change. You are transforming. And, you know, for some of you, 
the lies and the excuses that you make to yourself about other people's behavior is uncomfortably defining of who you are. So this is a lot of upheaval for some of you. And I think you've been feeling this coming on, but it's like a wave that you can hear, but you can't see it yet. You know, so the anxiety builds because you're like, I... Ooh, I, I feel the rumbling of this tsunami coming, but I don't see a thing. Everything seems so calm. And so when it hits you, it hits you hard. But And it may have already hit you, but it hits you hard. And it's like from one day to the next, you can no longer play the part you've played. You, you're, you're, you're playing a new part. And it's called, I'm not going to lie to myself. I refuse. And if that means that other people's feelings are hurt because of that, that's okay. But I'm not taking it upon me any longer to bear the brunt of the weight whether it's you carrying the family, whether it's you emotionally, financially carrying the family, carrying the relationship, doing all the emotional labor and heavy lifting, you just relinquish your duties. You don't have to be that golden child anymore. You just need some substantial happiness and connection in your life that you don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops to justify to yourself. I'm going to take a little break and then I will be back with a lot more about career and mental and physical health. I just need to have some warm tea and give my voice a little rest and then I will be back. I love you. I'll see you in the extended.